Today I'll show you how to fix the door on our Jayco Swan Camper trailer. This is what I had to do when the hinge had pulled through the door frame, but it's the same method to use if you have to replace one of the hinges. Let's get started. The tools I used when I made this video were a drill with a 7.5 and a 4.5 millimeter drill bit, a driver with a number two Phillips head bit, and I also used a number two screwdriver as well, a square with some black tape, a marking texture, a hacksaw, and a Stanley knife. If you want a full list or you want to see written instructions that accompany this video, check out the link in the show notes below. For the actual repairs, from Bunnings I got a one metre long piece of aluminium that was 25 millimetres wide and only one millimetre thick. Cost a total of $5.80. So to get things going, I just got the driver with the number two Phillips bit and undid the screws on the hinges and the door. Now if you're dealing with a hinge that's pulled through the door frame like I was, just be careful that only two out of the three hinges will be holding the door up. So once you undo those two, just be careful the door doesn't drop off. And this is what it looks like when the hinges have pulled through. Because the hinge is still stuck on the actual door, then I just remove that with the driver as well. Next we're on to disassembling the door frame. There's an end cap that's held in by one Phillips head screw. Undo that and the end cap should just pop off. Something to note here though is that you can see a small bit of plastic protruding, sometimes it's aluminium, and this is a shim that's been inserted in the manufacturing process to make sure that the door closes properly. Next you'll see four screws on the inside of the door jamb. Remove each of these with the driver, just ensuring that as you do the last couple that you hold onto the shim in case the door jam comes off. You want to make sure that we know the actual location of the shim or shims. Now depending on the age of your vehicle and how well the silicon job was done, you might find that the door jam comes straight off. If not, you'll notice a bead of silicon along the edge of the door jam. If it hasn't come off, you'll need to get your Stanley knife and run it down through the middle to cut the silicon, which should then allow it to come out. If it doesn't, use the aluminium strip and press it in through the top to cut the silicon, which will then enable it to come out. Apologies for the view of the back of the arm. I was just holding the shim in place and just double checking to make sure I could see where all the holes were so I could line it back up afterwards. This is what the inside of the door jam should look like and this is what it looks like when the screws have pulled through. Now originally I was just going to make a backing plate like this but then I figured well this isn't the first time this has happened so I may as well actually use the full length of the strip and do all of the holes at once. So because I bought the one meter all I did was lined it up to make sure that it actually covered the full length, got the texture marked out where I was going to cut it. Here, for some reason, I decided to get a uh, square and make sure I had a square cut. In retrospect, totally unnecessary, and you could just freehand that. I mean, I only thought afterwards that's actually going to be the inside of the door jam, and no one's going to see it. Then it was simply a matter of getting the hacksaw and cutting it to length. Once the aluminium strip was cut to length, I just held it in behind the door jam, used the black marker, marked dots for where I needed to drill the holes. I then got the drill and the 4.5mm drill bit to drill on the dots for each of the screws to go through. There was a total of six holes. Once I'd completed all six holes, I then switched over to the 7.5mm drill bit. This was to countersink the holes a little bit to enable the screw heads to sit more flush so that way it wouldn't interrupt with the closing of the door. 
And now just a confirmatory check to make sure it all lines up and the screw holes will go through without being impeded. After taking the screws out of the hinge that had pulled through, it was then a case of screwing it all back together. Here you can see the full length metal backing plate now in place and we're screwing through this into the door hinges. Here's where I chose to use a standard screwdriver rather than the actual driver because I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to strip any of the hinge threads. Now we can see that the hinges are all attached, we have a full length metal backing plate and it runs pretty flush so it shouldn't interfere with the door operation. Before I put the door jam back on the frame, I then used the Stanley knife to cut away all the old silicon. It's also worth noting that I actually had to do this job while we are out camping. If I did this at home, I would take this opportunity to also re-silicon the door jam to waterproof it. That's now unfortunately going to be a job for home. Now the plastic shim that I removed earlier, I've just used the black tape to roll it up to make it double sided and I've just put it back on the frame ensuring that the holes all line up and the shim is back in the exact same position. With the shim in place, it's now just a case of sliding the door jam back onto the frame. Apologies for the back of my head, but again, I was just making sure all the holes were lining up and it was seated properly. Happy that it all lined up, it was just a case again of getting those screws from earlier, getting the driver and reattaching it. Next, it's just a case of putting the end cap back in place and again, screwing it back in. We've now got a door jam back in place with three hinges that are more supported than how it comes out of the factory. So now it's just a case of hanging the door back onto the hinges. A point to note here is that because the hinges protrude, the door will sit on the hinges without the screws. So it's still just a one person job. Then it's just a case of screwing it all back together. Special shout out to my dog Hudson in the background there. And voila, we have a door that closes. But for the real test, all back together and closes easily. If you've found this video useful, don't forget to press like. Otherwise, subscribe for more Jayco Camper Trailer hints, tips, mods and DIY repairs.